Autumn marks the starting point of the farming calendar and for me the beginning of a year of total food self-sufficiency. It's going to be a bit of a shock to the system in more ways than one as Britain transitions from one of the driest summers on record to uh, something different. My first week has been crazy, like a really violent detox. And um, uh, I felt run over by a train. Um, but it's taken, um, yeah, and it's taken a week. Where, what are we? The ninth. So it's been nine days and I feel great now. Uh, headaches are gone. The caffeine withdrawal is just crazy, you know, absolutely crazy. Moody, a bit shouty, weepy, you know, really like hormonal, you know. And I, I just think it's a detox. It's de detoxing off caffeine is one thing. But also, there's so much stuff in the food we eat, you know, so many E numbers, so much processing that goes on. I haven't had anything like that. My eggs, you know, freshly laid by my own hands. There's you know, the things I eat are just very, very natural and raw and, and um, yeah. It takes a very, very long time to make the bread, as you're about to discover. This is about five hours picking um, of wheat in there, something like that. Um, I reckon about six weeks worth of bread. On Sunday evenings, I've, I've been making three 500 gram loaves and that lasts me for the whole week. Um, I mean, it didn't go off or anything. You could. You know, this is an implement of battle. Do you know what I mean? We could put it in a cannon and fire it at someone, my bread. Do some damage. It takes about an hour for me, non-stop, to produce a bag of grain like this. When you've been doing this for a few hours, you come to marvel at how extraordinary a combine harvester is, which takes wheat out of the field knocks it all about inside the combine harvester until you're left with one grain like that. That's all I want. This is just about good enough to go. It'll do as grain goes, but it's not great. I'm pretty certain, I don't know, but I'm pretty certain a grain merchant or a baker would go, yeah, I'm not gonna do anything with that. It's okay. And this is about survival. Do you know what I mean? I can't, what am I going to do? Say, oh, I'm not going to eat that. So in here, we've got fine flour now. Quite fine flour. 
And here we've got what's called bran. So I've got to do a whole one and a half kilos of flour before I can make my bread. It's okay, I'm not a bad bread maker, but this flour is quite coarse. It is quite coarse. Um, but it makes, and it makes quite solid bread. But I like it like that, you know? I'm, I'm fine with it. Now, we've just got to let that prove for an hour or so. And they don't last, so you just got to eat them. So I'm on about one a day. Most of this food doesn't even get to the kitchen. This, where the melons were, is a giant, massive rat's nest. And there are so many in there. And they, they were climbing up all the melons. That's just a, a slight gnaw on that one. They're climbing up the tomatoes and eating tomatoes just everywhere at the moment. And I think it's something to do with them being next to the chickens. I've got loads of bait stations for rat poison down. But there's so much for them to eat, they're just not interested at the moment. But there's plenty for me to eat too. Outside the garden is heaving with carrots and potatoes, roots and kale, cabbages and leeks, chard, peas. September is the crown of the vegetable season. In the polytunnel, the tomatoes, beans, chilies, melons and cucumbers are about to make way for winter salads, onions and early carrots. I hope these main trusses here are going to ripen. If they don't, I'll, I'll just make green tomato chutney out of them or whatever. I mean, the history of food in Britain uh, is written around the weather and you need 10 hours of daylight as an absolute minimum and the day length falls below 10 hours on Halloween and doesn't go back up above 10 hours until Valentine's Day. And so you've got this ginormous great big period where the light is less than 10 hours and things don't ripen, there's not enough uh, light for stuff to grow. The potatoes is the crop that I was expecting. Lots of them are in really good nick, That's, they're really good. But some of them are starting to get holes. I mean, I'll run out, I think, because they probably won't store very well because they've got blighted. But... They're better than they were, and I do have plenty. There's a huge difference between planting in September for salads inside and planting in uh, October. So you'll find because of the diminishing light, if I plant salads now, I'll get a crop before Christmas. If I plant salads towards the end of October, they'll crop the following March. That's the, that's the difference. Yeah, so storing and overwintering is just very, very important in our climate. Would you like to have a look in my freezer? At the moment, I'm freezing a lot of my fruit and veg as I don't have time yet to bottle and preserve. Tomatoes for sauces, green beans, mountains of blackberries, raspberries, dried frozen hops, and I've been batch cooking. It's not pretty, but my veggie chilli is a hit. What's in it? Carrots and beans and onions, some of those chilies some vegetable stock, all cooked in the slow cooker. This is uh, like a frittata kind of thing. 
that's got chard in it and onions and garlic. So everything you've grown? Everything in this freezer I have grown on my farm. Absolutely everything. And this is um, our stockpile of wheat, um, which um, has been harvested. I guess there's about 10 or 12 weeks worth here, um, maybe 15. Um, I'm going to run out, definitely, definitely going to run out. And what I'll start doing, I think, when I know how much more we're going to be able to harvest, given the weather's really turned, um, what I'll do is I'll start rationing myself probably because I don't I really don't want to run out until I've got into the spring and through the hungry gap and stuff because just bread's really important to me at the moment. It tastes of nothing because it's not got any salt in it. Because I forgot the salt. I was showing off in front of you and forgot. I mean, it's fine. They look like burnt cakes um, because they're made in cake tins, so they look even more like burnt cakes. Um, but um, they're great. I, I really like it. Like this, it's nice. the name journalists of a certain age uh, call the Queen for slang and I just think it's so prophetic that she's carving today when the Queen died last night. <laughs> 